Hi, I'm Bill C.D., and uh, I'm the one who wrote the book, which isn't actually out yet. It is at uh, Amazon Kindle at this point, but uh, it'll be out within a month. And my wife in the back, who's my Canadian inspiration, she's why did I get involved in doing uh, a book of this nature, which is to help people to understand, Americans to understand Canadians better? Um, but I just got interested in this subject because it seemed like Americans don't understand Canadians. They don't know anything about Canadians practically. Uh, so, even though we share 5,500 miles of border, uh, we have a history that goes way back to the Revolutionary War. Um, people have caricatures about Canada or stereotypes. They particularly talk about uh, little idiosyncrasies like their language, which, by the way, is not just English, it's French, and people make jokes about a and a boot and all this kind of stuff. And you know, Canadians don't universally talk about talk that way. They don't. Um, in fact, uh, uh, the, those particular idiosyncrasies are more more oriented to the eastern uh, provinces, as a matter of fact. But I found this very interesting because. For one thing, the name of the book is Americanada, which suggests that there's a connection between America and Canada. You do find that term every once in a while um, around. I didn't invent it. But the thrust of my book is not to help people move to Canada. There are books like that out there. My, my book is just basically to, to help people understand Canadians, how can we can work together, when I first started this, I was thinking in terms of, of a union even. My goal in this is just to educate people. And I thought of this, I decided to pose these questions to people that um, were right on the street there, willing to talk to me. I asked them uh, like eight questions. What, what country, and one of them was, offered to give the U.S. a cup of sugar in the form of oil and refused to accept it? Uh, burned down our White House approximately 200 years ago. Rescued a group of Americans during the Iran hostage crisis. Has the second largest land mass in the world. According to poll, has four out of ten Americans wanting to build a wall separating it. Really. Gave birth to America's most popular female singer. Populates a desert region of the U.S. with 500,000 residents during winter and spring. Invented basketball and recently had finalists at the Wimbledon Tennis Tournament. 46 people were uh, approached that were cooperating. Four answered correctly that the country was Canada. Only four. So that's a 92% ignorance percentage. <laughs> the other thing that I want to talk about is what Canadians are doing in their country that could possibly apply to California or to the United States in general. You all know about healthcare. You know they have a single single payer healthcare system up there. You probably heard that not everybody's happy about it. That there's uh, wait lists and this and that. Well, that's true. And there are Canadians that come across the border um, for the care that they get from uh, American doctors. They obviously have to pay for it. Uh, but um, a, a poll in Canada, they have a polling out, outfit that's called uh, Nanos. It was done several years ago, but it's still valid. 91% of Canadians would not trade their healthcare system for whatever we have in the United States. They would not. <laughs> Recently, the, the drug laws changed somewhat in, in California. You can have uh, recreational marijuana now. Canadians are still struggling with that. They actually haven't uh, legalized marijuana yet, even though you might have heard that they have. It's just less punitive up there at this point. Uh, Canadians actually have come up with a, a breathalyzer device. It's called a um, can cannabis. They've actually worked with uh, some researchers in Florida to come up with this. And they have um, gone down to Colorado where marijuana is, has been legal for some time. And they've trying to find out well, how, they, how are they doing in Colorado? How are they policing it? So, so 
Uh, another thing about this uh, that we want to cover a little bit is, is uh, gun laws. Uh, they have uh, a safety program, basically, up in Canada for, everybody has to pass a safety program, okay? And there's a 28-day waiting period before you can actually own the gun after you, you know, pass, uh, before you, uh, you know, pass the safety program. Um, they, they do not allow anybody to have assault weapons unless they've gone through an extensive, uh, not just safety program, but uh, experience, you know, with how to work, how to work everything. Um, and my understanding is that we're, you know, we're licensing guns here, we're registering them, which is good, but if people can just get a hold of those and not know how to actually use them, then is it that, you know, how far ahead are we? Anyway, they don't have anywhere near the number of murders that we have in Canada. That's part of the chapter of a book, Who's Superior? Uh, there's a magazine up there called The Queens. They've, they've uh, discussed who's the superior American. Is it Canadians or people in the United States? And they've come up with a whole raft of uh, statistics that suggest that uh, Canadians are superior in several different areas. In wealth, for one thing, for capital wealth, they actually are, are richer than Americans. Uh, they have, like I said, uh, less, less murders. Uh, they don't, uh, depending on what, what, what side of the capital punishment uh, issue you're on, they do not have capital punishment. They haven't had it since 1962. The one thing that I think that uh, Americans are particularly in, uh, aware of about Canada is this Keystone XL pipeline. There's been a lot of talk about that. Obama killed the pipeline that was going to go from basically Alberta, take the tar sands from Alberta uh, all the way through the mid Midwest down to uh, the south, Louisiana, where that, the, that the tar sands were going to be refined. The issue with the pipeline, a lot of people, a lot of Americans thought, well, we're just going to burn that oil for fuel, so what good is it? And we don't need the oil anyway. Well, there's over 300 products that come out of, come out, come out of oil, any kind of oil. Uh, tires, plastics, your computer, the cases for your computers. Um, we can't just suddenly give up oil as well as, as many people would like to do that. Uh, but Keystone is likely to go through now because of you know, Donald Trump. I mean, uh, it's just, it, it created a lot of tension between the United States and Canada, this pipeline. Um, more so than any other issue, I think, in the last three or four years. Or so, but I'd like to open this up to any questions or issues that anybody want to want to talk about at this point. How easy is it to move to Canada? Okay, I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that question up because it's difficult. It's, it's very difficult. Uh, as I was saying to one person in the, in the group here, you used to be able to just walk across the border uh, decades ago and, and, and apply to be a, a landed immigrant. Uh, now it's, it's not a landed immigrancy thing, it's a, it's a Canadian citizenship thing. If you really want to be a Canadian, you're going to have to renounce your citizenship, United States citizenship. Um, to do that, you have to go to the uh, federal government and you have to pay to the IRS a $2,350 $2, exit fee. <laughs> and you also have to prove, you also have to, prove to uh, the feds that you paid taxes and fought for five years straight. Um, then there are, um, uh, if you, the cost of moving, you know, actually physically moving your possessions across, across the border, I mean, that could be thousands of dollars. If you don't, uh, if you don't qualify as a an ideal potential Canadian, uh, you're going to be waiting, you know, a year or two to uh, uh, be naturalized. Um, and there are categories, but if you are somebody that's that they feel it would be good uh, to be a Canadian, such as if you have jobs that don't replace their own, you know, people's jobs. Uh, or bring money into Canada, or possibly on a student visa or, visa or something like that. There's an express entry program, which is $450 per individual. 
So one family, one child, it's $125 for a child, so you're looking at least $1,000 there. And if you're trying to get a faster uh, entry some way and you want to hire a lawyer, then you're looking at another $1,000 or $2,000. There's a dating cool. service. Uh, yes. I <laughs> There's a dating service uh, that's specifically trying to uh, match up uh, Americans with Canadian women, or vice versa, uh -huh. so that uh, you can get into Canada. Is that in your book? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mentioned it. I'm not trying to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a Canadian friend, and he told me I don't know if he has a stock chart or not, but anyone can buy land in Canada. Right. So I could go to Canada and buy a house, which right, right now the American dollar is worth a dollar forty in Canada. So it's quite a you know a good deal. And as long as you come over the border every six months, even for a day, right. you can live in Canada. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So that's just another option. That well, it is an option. Live in that is an option. Yeah, it's not the, only, the only problem is, is if you live in Canada, uh, you know, part time up to that six month period, approximately. Uh, and you don't uh, reveal your income from Canada or from the United States at the same time, you're going to be uh, in trouble with the IRS because there's a program called FATCA, F-A-T-C-A, mm -hmm. Foreign Accounting Tax Compliance Act, which got started about three or four years ago. And uh, they want to know about all your income. Why, right, but if you're not working, say, have a retirement. Well, no. You go well, but see, but if you're getting interest from you're uh, from some uh, previous position, position uh, and you got money in, your, in a bank in Canada. The Canadian banks are cooperating with all this. And in which, well, but in response to this, the Canadian government just imposed in the past few months a 15% a year tax on the cost of the home. You have to pay 15% every year for a home that is not regularly occupied by the owner. Oh, wow. Did you raise your hand when well, I see art? Remember those? Those guests that we've stayed with twice, um, and she's a nurse. She's a U.S. citizen, and he's Canadian. Right. And she goes back to Tennessee to work because they won't hire her as a nurse in Canada because she's not Canadian. That's right. Just like California has its own admission admission standards. Yes. Uh, I'm an American citizen. So I'm an American citizen that has been living in Canada since 1986. Okay. And. Uh, Quite frankly, a lot of people just don't pass the qualifications for certain. You, you, you know, a nurse to come from the U.S. to Canada have to pass the Canadian yeah. Yeah. licensing board so right. yeah. before they get hired. You know, I think it's it might not just be that being an American, it yeah. may not be licensed there. Well, our husband's out right. You do not have to get a Canadian license, yeah. just like you would a driver's license or the emission standards for your own deal or anything like that. So, so do you, you live in Canada? So what do you Six. feel is the difference between the two countries? Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. What do you say? You say it's not Spanish. Spanish. We have better manners. Oh okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Bob. Oh, yeah. So the next subject is civility. So how long did you go over there for six months? And you have to come back within every six months. No, I live in Toronto. For six months? No, I'm a very firm. How did that work? How did you do that? Hmm? How did that? How did you do that? Uh, well, You're a American citizen? I'm sorry? You're a dual? No, I'm an American citizen, but I've been here in Berlin since 1986. And uh, it, was, it was a process. You know, I, I had to, it was kind of a catch-22. I couldn't get my land in the status until I had a job. And I couldn't get a job until I had my land So yeah, it sounds like I wanted to be the best in the And yeah, it was very long and complicated. Have to pass all kinds of criminal checks. So they're, you know, they're, you know, they're the just, cheapest way to, to, to just wow. eventually maybe become a Canadian citizen is obviously to move up there part time and you know get get the lay of the land. And uh,